Welcome, everybody, to the Hustle Culture Podcast, and I've got an amazing, energetic guest with me, Owen Hemsath. I'm your host, Ty Roxon, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Carlos Gill. Los? Yo, yo, what is going on, hustlers? Welcome to another episode of Hustle Culture. We're here on Blab Broadcasting, so thank you so much for all of you that are joining us today. Make sure you tell a little bird. Let's get the Twitters chirping. And for those of you that have subscribed to the show on iTunes and left us a review, thanks for the support. We really appreciate it. So we're really excited. We've got a great guest joining us here today. His name is Owen Hemsath. He's a YouTube specialist speaker. He does workshops for brands. This guy is the truth. He has a great story to share with us about his journey and you guys are really in for a treat. So, Owen, welcome to Hustle Culture. What's up, players? How you doing? <laughs> We're doing good. We're doing good. I want to welcome everybody that's on Blab today because, you know, it's Halloween. And even though Halloween doesn't have that Christmas appeal, you know, you walk into a Christmas party, everyone's like, Merry Christmas. Like, it's so Merry Christmas, Owen. You know, you go to Halloween, it's like, what's up, cool? You know, how you doing? Cool costume. It's a little bit different, but we take, ladies especially, will take the whole day out, you know, to Uh get ready in that nurse costume. So I appreciate you guys logging in, joining us live, and and, uh, I promise to to bring the rain. Hey, this is the (laughs) pregame. This is the pregame. So there you go. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) We're 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 bringing it out. We're bringing it out. But, you know, Carlos and I like to do this uh, segment before we do we get into the interview, which is the weekly grind, and we want you to join. We want you to tell us what you did on your weekly grind as well. But, um, Carlos, what, what was your week like, man? Well, you know, first, I want to start off by saying happy birthday to oh. my co host, Tyle Roxon. Yeah. For those who are watching us here on Blab, make sure that you prop him up because this young man just celebrated his birthday yesterday. <laughs> Thank you. And. Thank you. Not only was it his birthday, but most recently, Tayo was recognized by Ebony Magazine as being one of the top live streamers today. So major props and kudos to you, my friend. (laughs) You know, you try to start a show, talk about your your, your co-host, and he turns it right back at you. Thank you all. <laughs> no, so Thank actually, you. you know, it's it's been a great week, you know, for for both of us as we continue, you know, our journey and our climb here with Hustle Culture being featured on iTunes, new and noteworthy, you know, that's really cool. But I spent this week, you know, the good part of it at a conference that was put on by Neil Schaefer. It was here in San Francisco. It was a social tools summit. I had an opportunity to speak on both days. And that's great. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a great event. You know, a lot of big name speakers there. We were talking about different tools and technology. And I like to think that this is the beginning of the 2016 Carlos Gill comeback tour. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. Lots Don't of call events it I want to be a part of next year. I want to get back out there on the road speaking at conferences. So, you know, really thankful that Neil gave me the opportunity to to speak both days at this one. And, uh, you know, one of the sessions I spoke about was on using visuals in marketing. And I, I spoke at great length about using Blab, about using live stream. Another was how do you justify the ROI to your executives of using social media? So I talked a little bit about my experience working on both, you know, the consumer side and B2B side at different brands. And, you know, again, really uh, thankful for the opportunity and always love getting out to conferences and sharing knowledge, but also networking, you know, got a chance to hang out with Michael Brito and, you know, Jill Rowley and a bunch of other folks out there. So good week for me. What about for you, Mr. Roxon? Well, um, first of all, congrats on that. I can't wait for this comeback tour. Uh, like you, I, I've, I've, I'm starting, I'm doing a speaking tour next year. So a lot of a lot of you know, some of you may not know, I, I run a media company that focuses on helping companies and individuals communicate across cultures. So one of my clients is a, is a company that wants to uh, get into the Nigerian market. I am Nigerian. I did grow up in different countries. So we made a significant breakthrough this week because we, you know, we, we tweaked some things and it improved the conversion rate. So it was really exciting to see some of the things that I've been working on actually work. And as far as the speaking tour and going into... Uh, uh, environments next year i will be going around several cities in new york to talk about millennials diversity culture and why people should invest in in um, you know emerging markets so it's going to be an interesting year we were just putting down the fine-tuning now the 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 details behind that so it was a lot of work it was a lot of work it was a lot of work and then 
uh, besides the weekly grind, we were putting up episodes. We I saw that thanks to you all, hustle culture ranked high, and 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 we are just killing on the new and noteworthy chart. My other podcast is told by nomads also did well, uh, and and it's on the what's hot chart. And basically, it was all hustle, man. It was all work, but it didn't feel like work because right. I was doing what I loved. Right. So that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, and how about you? Tell us about your weekly grind. I beat cancer. <laughs> Woo! That, that's what I did this week. Um, uh, yeah, you know, well we'll, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more. But uh, this was my, uh, this is what I call power week. Um, so as I've been going through the chemotherapy process, I've sort of broken down my schedule into three major weeks. And that's um, uh, <laughs> Jason Orton goes, yeah, but what have you done lately? Dude, I love that guy. That guy's so funny. Um, I I broke it up into, um, uh, chemo week and that chemo week, uh, uh, annihilates your body and your mind. Uh, then I, I, then the next week is the climb, right? That's where I'm climbing back up to health. And then my third week is power week. Last week was power week. So it was my first power week where I don't have to go back to chemo, uh, you know, on Monday, this coming Monday. So I was out getting things done, man. I bought a brand new camera for the studio, So I spent a lot of time geeking out on that camera, really getting in tune with what I love and why I got in to what I'm doing. Uh, I was sitting on my my couch this morning. I had a lot of audio issues uh, this week. And, you know, I was dusting off the cobwebs a little bit because I've had a production manager handling a lot of that through through this uh, this trial. So I I got to sit on the couch this morning even and just play with my Sennheiser microphones. And, uh, you know, I'm doing this and I'm like, this is what I love to do. Taya, just like what you were talking about. Like, that's what I that's what my work is, is improving the audio, improving the video. I even got um, went went back to the Dollar Tree, which I discovered recently is called D Tree by the kids. (laughs) So, oh, the kids renamed it. Yeah. So when I was a kid, they used to hang out in the Del Taco parking lot. I guess nowadays it's Dollar Tree is the cool place to go. But I went down to Dollar Tree and I I bought a drawing pad and I started storyboarding again. Um, And I haven't, you know, I'm not an artist, uh, you know, drawing artist by any means, but, you know, storyboards are a big part of the business. I've been getting so busy. I haven't done a lot of that. So I've really been reconnecting, getting in tune and uh, enjoying um, the health that uh, that I'm now experiencing. So it's been a killer week. Well, hey, you know, you've got, you've got a great story to share. And, you know, we're going to get into that, you know, over the next hour. I let Tayo know that this this could be kind of an emotional interview. <laughs> so I, I, I prepared it, man. I'm already, I'm already here trying to trying to fight back some of the tears, man, because you are, yeah. you know, like I shared with you when we chatted over the phone a couple of weeks ago, man, you are an inspiration, you know, to a lot of us out there. So... God bless you, brother. Thank you, bro. And I appreciate that. And for any of you guys that are going through cancer or know someone who's going through cancer, I want you to know that I've got your back. Uh, Check out my my hashtag, hashtag life wins, Uh, especially on YouTube. I've been video documenting my, you know, my whole, my whole experience. I mean, straight up in chemotherapy, live streaming video, what I'm going through. Um, And so I urge your, your friends and family that may be struggling with chemo to go through that and to gain some strength through that if they can, you know what I mean? Because uh, we're all in this together. Absolutely. And, you know, it's going to be an emotional episode, but it's also going to be the trillest. Is that right, Owen? (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be trill. And keeping it trill. Keeping it trill. Keeping it real. That's just how we do. It's it's, it's, just simple. It's a basic way of life. So as we start on this trill trill journey, trill podcast, it's going to be the best podcast ever. Why don't you just tell us your hustle journey? Basically tell us how you got started, how it, you know, you got into the game, you, you know, competed and got to where you are today yeah well it, it happened when i was kicked out of high school and arrested um that kind of killed the college journey for me but uh <laughs> now that's that is a true story but uh, and it's on my video blog but uh, that's that's not really that's just kind of like a, a you know a, an inflammatory way of beginning the conversation but really, <laughs> Mike, we asked why you were kicked out of high school and arrested oh yeah man i was uh, i was a bad kid i was definitely like uh y- you know pissed off when i was in high school um, felt the world owed me something, um, and, and started just kind of like being, being a a ruffian in a rather upscale middle-class neighborhood. So that all happened. And that certainly began in me. Um, that's when I kind of woke up to the world and saw what was going on. I got into sales, got into marketing, uh, life happened, but I think my entrepreneurial, the hustle journey really began when I was on judge Judy, 
um, in 2009 when, you know, they called me, uh, my girlfriend and I broken up, they called me and were like, Hey, would you guys like to break up on live or, you know, on national oh, wow. television? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, she had filed a lawsuit and then they fought, it was dirty, dude. It was dirty. So, um, we went on to judge Judy and when I got there, I saw that we went on the show. I got my, my butt kicked on, on air and it was fun. Then I noticed that a whole bunch of people were commenting and tagging and, and getting a conversation going on YouTube and on Facebook, all sorts of chicks and all sorts of dudes were mm. like, Hey, what up, yo? You know what I mean? Saw you on judge Judy. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I built this audience. I built this huge audience and a huge shout out to Jason Michael Miller, who I met through that that experience and is still my buddy to this day. We've never met in person, but we're good Facebook friends. Um, uh, Michael Michael Leo, you know, is out there on my Facebook page checking stuff out. So I saw that I could build an audience through this medium, and I immediately said, "Can I duplicate this over and over and over again?" And so I started to pursue YouTube and what we could do with video. Love it, love it. And then when you started talk about that that beginning journey, so what were you what was your first video like? What was it like? Was it just, hey, I'm the George Judge Judy guy, and I was the one that got broken up on national TV? No, was no, like, I didn't even this. talk about that. I didn't even want that to come up. What I started doing though was exactly that was creating video content and kind of throwing it out to this new on this new platform called Facebook. Right, this is like oh mm -hmm. nine. Um, so so Facebook's three years old to the public. Uh, we had just kind of transitioned over from MySpace, and we're looking at this this new thing and 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 seeing what we could do there. So the first video I made, I was playing a lot with green screens, and I had bought a ninety nine dollar video editing software on the web called Pinnacle, and it came with the green screen. Uh, then I bought software that I could green screen stuff out. So the first thing I did was actually like a political talk show, and uh, I, I you know I I wrote it myself, I produced it myself. It wasn't funny. It might be on the web somewhere. Um, uh, but I was commenting on the, the, I was trying to do a daily show type thing. Um, and from there I, it didn't get a lot, I don't know if I got a lot of laughs, you know, I'm not a real funny person, but, um, it was funny that I tried to do it. Like nobody else was doing anything like that. So mm -hmm. I, I put this green screen up in my, um, we had a third room in the house we were renting, put the green screen up and I would do like, like video like this. Right. And, and then I would turn it into a GIF. And I would make like this animated, <laughs> like 3D picture of myself. And that was my profile pic on MySpace. So I just started expanding and playing with this new technology and seeing where it would go. And soon people were asking me to do that for them or how they could do that. And it just kind of grew from there. Wow. Yeah, it, it always tends to morph, you know, man, good old MySpace. <laughs> yeah, I remember. It always tends to morph where people see that you have a presence on these different platforms and they just ask because it's happened with me over the years throughout LinkedIn. Now it's happening with Snapchat. People like they're, they're just hungry for this knowledge. Yeah. yeah. And it's awesome when you can just take what you, what you do on a daily basis with your eyes closed and you can actually teach people. And the coolest thing is when you can actually monetize it and make money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. You know what? People want to be, I think they want to be wowed. They they want to be exposed to what this technology can do. Like we all hear these headlines that are like doctors this and scientists that. And a lot of these things never really manifest themselves into our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, scientists found another Earth-like planet. And it's like, wow, we all get so excited and blah, blah, blah. But what does that, what does that do for you? Like mm -hmm. in a week, then they find out it's a dead planet anyway, or it's actually a star. Oops, we were wrong. And that stuff doesn't get reported. <laughs> My point is, is that we hear this stuff and we, we hear that, that we're, we're like technology is advancing, but we don't physically get to experience it in our life. So when you can actually kind of in your own way, deliver something to people and then they think, well, that's tangible. I can do something with that. I'm learning from that. And that's kind of what YouTube and video was. It became a place where people could learn. And like, I actually got, you know, a thousand new subscribers because of what I learned from your video, Owen. Uh, and that actually impacts their life. So we try to take what's new, what's fresh, what's hot. And how do we, how do we package that into something that people can use um, in, in a way that benefits their life? And, and when you do that, you become someone that people look up to and admire. So, so basically so providing value. Yeah, providing value. Absolutely. And our technique is um, is to use technology to deliver that value. 
Oh, and so tell us about your business model. Tell us about your company. You know, you talked a little bit about how you got into the space, but you are one of the go-to thought leaders when it comes to YouTube video marketing. So tell us about your business. What do you do? Who are some of the clients that you that you work with? Sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I'm in uh, YouTube marketing. So what, you know, and it's a flattering, you'd say I'm one of the go-to guys. I think that I'm certainly building that reputation for myself. My focus is on YouTube marketing for business owners. That's really the right. specifics of, of what we do because there is a huge marketplace for educational how and how-to content mm -hmm. on YouTube. The problem is, is that most business owners are thinking of YouTube as a place for Charlie bit my finger and where my 16 year old daughter watches like hairstyle and makeup videos. Right. Now, beauty is a billion dollar industry on, yeah. on YouTube. So, so there's a lot of value there. Don't get me wrong. But what we want to do is we want to work with that, that software provider who's, who's making apps, who's making software is one of my clients, PPS plus, right? They just mm -hmm. sold their company. So that's really exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's it sounds like I'm transitioning over with the buy. So I just met with the new uh, the new owners and their PR team. Um, Whoa. You know, the idea is to to package their software again in in valuable nuggets that can be delivered to their audience that bring value to their life. So, for example, we're doing a whole series with them on ICD-10, which is a nurse coding thing. Mm -hmm. uh, what up to all my nurses out there? The idea is, is that we help these nurses code their um, their patients better. And if they code better, they get more of the reimbursement, right? Going through the hospital system, I've learned that, you know, the hospital is going to bill the insurance for 20 grand. Insurance is going to say, we'll give you five. And, the, and the, the, you know, they go, okay, we'll take five. You know, mm -hmm. so the better your codes are, the more money you make. And that's the value we provide. How can I make more money? Well, take a look at the software. So that's that's an example of how we use YouTube to get out there. Our model is to educate business owners, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs on the value and the tactics behind delivering a message to people, right? There's a way to do it. Ever since the early Roman uh, Greek days, right? People have been, um, uh, it, it was the Greek word for lawyer. And we now, the word is lawyer. I'm trying to remember the old, uh, the old expression, but they would eloquently express themselves. So we show you how to do that in a way that benefits your audience and then get that video on the web in a place where people can actually see it. So it's a lot of those things that go into, go into our process. I'm sorry, Owen. Tell us again about the uh, name of your company. Oh, I'm sorry. Company is Video Spot. You can reach us at thevideospot.net. Excellent. And so, you know, I'm really curious to know why do you feel that your um, your business model is is valuable to business owners out there? Okay, that's a great question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that opportunity. I'm gonna take my jacket off. Oh, <laughs> take take it off. It's, it's on. It's on. <laughs> so, so here are my th thank you, Eileen, for the uh, the props. Um, <laughs> here are my thoughts on that. There are gentlemen and gentlewomen out there who I believe are much more talented than I am, or just as talented, um, and they work one on one with large brands, Red Bull. Um, you know, these bigger companies, PepsiCo, they, they, um, they work with large YouTube channels, right? And they pay, they're paid a lot of money for that. And that is awesome. In fact, we do have a, a couple clients that we work with that are bigger YouTube channels. And we, we work to get them deals with brands and stuff like that. Um, we've worked a lot with, uh, Nick Cicero, Del Mondo to, to yep. try to connect brands, that uh, kind of thing. But to hire a YouTube marketing specialist to grow your channel from a million subs to 5 million subs is not inexpensive. What we have done is we have made a model that brings business owners together in a group setting where we train them live, right? Live training. This is not a downloadable course where you sign up for 150 bucks, you get all these videos and you're not allowed to talk to me or tag me in the group. Not at all. We, we bring these people together in a forum and we teach in four segments, your, your setups, 
your workflows, because YouTube is all about mastering workflows, right? How to master the, the writing workflow, how to master the production workflow, how to master the optimization workflow. And then we teach growth strategies, right? Here's how you get your first thousand subscribers. Here's how you get your first 8,000 views. And here's how you get you know leads and sales. We have different growth strategies to accomplish different business objectives. So we actually put people together in sort of a, in, some have called it an obstacle course uh, because <laughs> these are strategies that really do you have to you have to make them work. Um, and so that's what we've done. We, we've made we've made it affordable and we've made it uh, duplicatable so that that anybody that wants to the local bakery or a seven million dollar veterinarian can come into this organization and have success on YouTube. All right. And so I, I got a, I got a few questions here. It's going to be question for me and question from the lovely Eileen who I've rapidly become a fan of because she's yeah, so engaged. Awesome. <laughs> so first question is can you talk about your growth strategies? What you do to when you're advising companies and people. Yeah, what, yeah. What Absolutely. So let's talk about you see how I pick up my coffee and then I, you know, and then I, I put it back down again. Reminds me of uh, Back to the Future Three where Doc Brown hasn't taken a drink all night. He takes his first drink and then and then he's he's out, you know. <laughs> um, growth strategy. So let's talk about our our um, our launch strategy, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is like behind the curtain type Wizard of Oz stuff. So we had a client, Jennifer. She Jennifer is a sales trainer, and brand new channel. She had fifty videos in the hopper ready to go, um, and maybe three of them were already on YouTube. But no, you know nobody nobody just discovers your content on YouTube. You have to push it out. So. Right. You know, she hired me to uh, to grow her channel, and our goal was to get her to a thousand subscribers. So, so what we did was we created a um, um, a joint venture program with some of her uh, well known associates. Right. So these people have email marketing lists. What we did was we created content that gave props to these people that had these giant lists. We work with two people specifically. One of them was Jeffrey Gittimer. And I, I don't mind mentioning Jeffrey's name because all of this, by the way, is on our website under the success stories tab. So you can actually walk through the case study there. Um, what happened was, was we made content that, that flattered these other two and gave props to these other two um, uh, holders of the email marketing list. Mm -hmm. And then we said, Hey, we just made these videos. Would you be willing to, to show that, you know, to blast these out in your next email newsletter database? Uh, absolutely was, was the answer. Not everybody says, by the way, not everybody says absolutely. And if you're lo a local bakery or a veterinarian or a software company, and you don't have a lot of connections, you're going to, or, or you don't have a lot of strong connections. You're going to have to reach deep and form relationships first and then ask for that in exchange. And we, you know, we could talk about that, but here's what happened. Those two guys emailed their, their, their lists out with her launch video, but she didn't just have one video. She had a whole series on the web. So people can okay. geek out on her content. We call that, um, you know, binge watching or, yep. um, like Netflix. Right. yeah, it's, it's improving your watch time, which is absolutely key on YouTube is getting someone to watch your channel for a long, long time. Right. And that long, long time is relative to how long your videos are. You know what I mean? So the idea was this, they would send that out, get a whole bunch of traffic back to her channel and it worked absolutely perfectly she got 8000 views in her first day of uh, broadcasting the channel and uh, 800 wow. subscribers came in on day 1 another couple hundred came in on day 2 uh by the end of the the weekend she had a thousand new subscribers she had thousands of new views and she'd even made 4 bucks in adsense um so wow. everything worked we 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 you know we hit every goal we were meant to accomplish. So that is that is like a launch strategy, and that is that is textbook is what you would experience in in my course. So, oh, right. would, right. would you say that the you know just kind of building off of what you just said with that example that the easiest or most effective way of growth hacking YouTube, if you will, is by leveraging your mailing list, your email list, leveraging social media channels? I think that's or one part of it. Yeah, I think that's one part. And I would separate email marketing from social media channels. Those are two separate strategies. But but even within email, there's a couple different strategies that you could be employing, right? That was just one. The other is, yes, of course, your own email marketing list, right? So if you've got a list of a thousand people 
And then you blast that email list. You have an average open rate of, let's just say, 20% and an average click-through rate of 24%. You know, that's that's um, not, you know, it's not a lot of views, but it's, it's something like, a, let's just say, 100 new views on that video before it launches. So here's what we would do. We would keep your video unlisted while we email your personal network. So only people uh -huh. with the link can see the video, right? And we would try to get that video as many views as we can using our organic push sources as we can. And then we make the video live to the public so it opens up with views. This is what we call velocity. And it's it's building your video on an upwards crescendo. Not every, but not every video is going to hit. That's why you got to make 10. And if, you, if one or two of those videos hits, then you're in a really, really good position, not just to build a network, but to uh, to actually make sales, right? Uh, for YouTube, for me, is not a, a um, uh, if you guys see my channel, I got 6,000 subscribers. I, I'm in love with every single one mm -hmm. of them. You know, and my goal is not to make that 100,000 or 200,000 subscribers, although I do believe with time that will happen. My goal All is right. to convert new clients to my way of business. What does that mean for me? It means an income for me and I'm able to support my family, but it means right. for them, a new income stream for them and a whole new way of doing business for them. So it's a synergistic symbiotic relationship. Uh, both of us benefit and it, and it comes from us working together to grow your brand, right? My brand will go through YouTube. I don't need to advertise on your emails or anything like right. that. We're all about right. being the client advocate. And that's a perfect segue into Miss Smith's Eileen's question, which is it, it's centered around creators. So she wants to know your thoughts on YouTube Red and what it means for creators. Okay, so let's let's break that down a little bit. Um, YouTube Red, YouTube Red is YouTube's new subscription service, and it allows you to do a lot of different things, like download your uh, the videos to your phone and watch. You can add them to a watch later list and watch the video later. That's probably my favorite feature of of YouTube Red is that I can now you know go through my videos in the evening. What am I going to watch later? Put them on in the car because now they're on my phone versus streaming through the air and I get a better quality signal. Um, but it also right. means that you can watch YouTube videos ad free if you're paying this $9.99 a month or whatever uh, whatever the case might be. Um, what does it mean for creators? So creators. Um, a, a YouTube creator is anybody putting content on YouTube. However, mm -hmm. colloquially... What we think of as a creator is somebody who's doing YouTube full time to be a YouTube star, mm -hmm. right? So right. Uh, someone like Jason Horton is a YouTube creator and he's at, uh, at Jason Horton uh, on YouTube, uh, does funny sketch comedy videos. Um, I think he's like a true pure creator, right? That like his whole, his whole revenue model comes from what he's doing on YouTube. Now right. a business is also a creator or a brand but we look at YouTube differently. So when we say, what is YouTube Red going to do for creators? Let's talk about the Jason Hortons, the Smoshes, mm -hmm. um, the PewDiePies, uh, the Michelle fans, the, the beauty channels, that sort of thing. Those are, those are who we're really talking to. Um, it's going to make it for them a, a different way and I think a better way to make their money. Because now they're not relying on ad spend or, or you watching an ad for them to make their money, although they, they are making some of that for the non-red subscribers. What it right. enables them to do is to create, um, to create premium content that's only available to those paid subscribers. That means monetization opportunities, and it also means um, opportunities to build more community. So I think that this is going to be something that's very, very healthy for creators. I don't think it's something that brands uh, are going to necessarily participate in. I think brands are still going to be looking at partnering on that premium content with YouTubers. And they're also going to be looking at advertising on YouTube through the pre-roll ads and things of that nature. Uh, and businesses right. like myself, um, I don't see it's it's not I you know it's not necessarily for me if I'm going to produce premium content I'm going to charge a lot more than 99 for it I'm going to have you on my own website where I can remarket you get that watch time get that that SEO time so I'm not going to right. use it. I'm still going to want to create massively you know popular content for my audience and if you're a business that's what you should be doing Eileen Smith knows that she does great videos 
uh, and I think that her audience is is um, uh, is going to grow very quickly. So you know that's what we want to be doing. That's what we want to be focusing on. So I think Red's going to hit some people, but the other people, Red's going to it's you know. Okay. We're not even going to think about it. Oh. It's good. No, I just I just wanted to know. But if we go back to the to your beginning, your first early days, when did you start? <laughs> I love that cup. <laughs> Best strike to force. Uh, if we go back to I your like early my days, coffee. Right? I like my coffee on the dark side. On the dark side, you are the dark side guy. The Empire Strikes ah. Back. <laughs> out of my star, I'm drinking out of a Star Wars mug for those of you in podcast land. Yes, that's what's happening. That's that's really happening. Like and, uh, he's going to contrib- he's going to contribute to making Star Wars the highest grossing movie of all time before it even hits the theaters. Before it even hits. Uh, the theaters. Look at look at that Empire yeah, Strikes Back. But speaking of empires and striking back and being the forces that were meant to be. <laughs> segue. How did you realize that you were going to be the force you were meant to be? When was that? Uh, when was that positive change for you? Because I, I imagine you initially started. You said you were a trouble kid. You were this guy that got arrested. Yeah. You know, you were breaking up on live TV. You would just come across YouTube. You're an early adopter of some of these social media platforms. But when did it start to make sense for you? Um, you know. It, being the entrepreneur, and I've ne- I didn't consider myself an entrepreneur until about 25 years old. And when I was about 25, that's when I realized, man, I'm kind of like entrepreneur. I'm different than everybody else, um, or, or a lot of other people. And there are certain people I really connect with. Um, I didn't even know that was called an entrepreneur um, until um, a lot, a lot later. Uh, you know, what made sense to me was, I'll tell you, it started off with multi-level marketing. You know, I, I, I started off in a multi-level marketing uh, organization when I was 22 years old, and I started to learn about concepts I'd never heard about before. Um, leverage, uh, heard about, you know, opium, right? Other people's money and how to, me- how to leverage uh, an investment dollar and how to leverage time and things like that. So that kind of woke me up to the world. When I turned around and realized personally that multi-level marketing was was not a business, but but more of like a sales position for a larger company, um, that's when oh my gosh, the world crumbled and sort of like this cage that I had built around myself crumbled, and I got to see the Emerald City, and I thought I can do this for myself, you know, mm. and from then. From then on, I, I looked at myself as a product and I wanted to sell my product to other companies. I thought I'm a great salesperson. I know how to close. People like me. I produce media. I've been producing media content since I was a kid. Um, so even, even at companies, I was, I was making PowerPoints and then like exporting them as PowerPoint shows. Uh, I don't even think PowerPoint has that feature anymore, but somebody would open it and it would just run through the animations. It was video. And, right. you know, so I began to package that and, and, and leverage that. I'd walk into job interviews like Ben Affleck in Goodwill Hunting. And I'd be like, you got $100 in your pocket right now. <laughs> you know, and I would, I would, I, I actually started to sell myself and, and people would say, well, here's what we pay. I said, okay, well, let's talk about what you're going to pay me. You know, because nice. I never like the other schmoes that you got working here. Um, so <laughs> that, that grew and grew and grew when I, I sold, um, I sold fifty thousand dollars in in uh, in home improvement products to a, a couple in in Santa Barbara. I went to Europe and um, with that with that commission that I made, and I started to really think about where I want to go in life. And uh, that's when twenty grand a month became became kind of like the goal. And I set my sights on that goal until I achieved that, which was very you know right after I started Video Spot. Wow, love it. So, you know, Owen, um, you know, Tayo, he runs a media company. I started up a, a business of my own during the recession and yeah, oh yeah, own and operate a business. So you can relate throughout the climb. There's a lot of highs and lows and typically there's more lows than there are highs. So yeah. talk to our audience about some of the obstacles that you have faced throughout your journey and how have you overcome them? Uh, yeah, I mean, we could start with cancer and chemo, you know what I mean? Um, my, you know, my business was on the upscale. Uh, I, I can't even explain it to you guys. Like things were really starting to click. I was getting speaking. I got like three speaking engagements in one month, you know, for the next year, of course. Um, and then as I started to execute those speaking engagements, I was doing joint partnerships with guys like Jeffrey Gittimer, who's got a database of over 200,000 and, and, and his clients are starting to call me and buy from me. Um, 
and I, I'm being flown out to these cities and, and, and it's like, I'm like, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. And then boom, I'm on the floor clutching my chest, crying to my wife. What is wrong with me? Um, cancer, hmm. chemotherapy, you know, and if you guys check out my, my, if you go to the life wins hashtag and you check out my very first video where I'm just out of surgery, you have a 10 inch scar that goes down my chest where they ripped my breast bone open, pulled out a 12 centimeter tumor, threw it in the trash and said, now you can go back to work. Um, you know, my first video, I was in tears, you know, it was really challenging to be young and to hear that you've got cancer. Um, then to hear that you're going to be devastated by chemotherapy. Um, wow. I made one promise to myself that the business would continue to grow. And I didn't care if it grew by 1% or if it grew by, you know, 40%, whatever. Mm -hmm. It was going to grow. Um, so I organized my week. I got into warrior, warrior mode, beast mode, monster mode. And I just made sure that happened. So that was a huge obstacle for me. Um, but it was also, it got me thinking in a way I had never thought before, right? I have a staff, I have a team, I have systems. How can I fully push these out so that I can take 10 days off a month? Because that's what chemotherapy does. You get chemo on Monday and you are sicker than you've ever been in your life, covered by an internal darkness that I would not wish on my worst enemy. While yeah. your competitors are out there happy, you know, trying to steal your customers. Yep. You know what I mean? So I got hungry yeah. and that hunger turned into invention, you know? Huh. And so we, but we began to, to, you know, utilize these automated systems that we had. Did we stumble and fall? Yes. And, and, and so we did a live stream. We fell flat on our face and I won't go into the details, but I never charged the client a dime. Had right. nothing to do with cancer. Had nothing to do with it. But yeah, maybe I wasn't there as in the beginning as much as I could have been. So we did fail, but we we promised that even through those failures, we would we would burst through. Um, the other part of that, I went way more into that than I wanted to. Um, the other part of that, though, um, to be real transparent, is I am an older millennial. I was born in 1980. Uh, this space is dominated by guys who are five years younger than me. Um, and that was really, it's really intimidating at first. You know, when I go out into the business community, I'm looked at as the young pup. But when I'm in these mastermind groups and I'm backstage with other speakers, they're, you know, in some cases, 10 years younger than me. Um, always polite, always cool. No one has ever been like, hey, grandpa or anything like that. <laughs> but inside of me, I'm thinking, dude, I'm like, I've got four kids. Um, I've got a mortgage. I've got, you know, I like, you know, private school and, and all these things that we're paying for. Uh, Eileen says my audio is breaking up. I apologize for that. Um yeah, yeah, then yeah. No, I, I had I would, to push through that. Is, 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 am I the only one? Are you hearing audio breakup? I, I hate yeah, to cut it off. It's a little choppy. We'll just work with it. You know, Owen, dude, I, I learned about your story through a mutual friend of ours, Sebastian Rusk. Yeah. And I, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going with this. So All I was right. on Facebook and I see that Sebastian had posted a photo of you post surgery with. Yeah you know, showing your chest and you're there in the right. hospital bed. And honestly, my man, I, I hadn't, I hadn't heard of you before. Right. And you know, this is again, the power of social media and Owen, or I'm sorry, Sebastian just asked for the prayer warriors to come out right. and say a prayer. And, and as soon as I, I started poking around, man, I see this guy, he's a father. He's a husband. Yeah. He's a young guy, man. Like I started to tear up and I just started praying for you, not knowing Amen, you. Bro. And yeah. then, then we actually connected, became friends on Facebook. And now I'm seeing you speaking at events. I think you were at one in DC. Yeah. I'm seeing photos of you on an airplane with, with a surgical mask on your face. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. holy shit. Why am I complaining about the stupidest things when this guy is fighting for his life, but also hustling just to keep moving forward? You know, like- yeah. Dude, you are, in my opinion, the definition of what hustle is all about, which is never giving up, regardless of what the circumstances may be. Amen. Amen. You know, and there's there's a lot of things that you said there that I really relate to. I, you know, people call me. Can you guys hear me okay, by the way? Is the audio better? No, it's not. You may want to try refreshing the browser. I'm gonna uh, do that right now. Yeah. Tyler, we'll just jam out here for a little bit while you refresh the browser and come back in, but 
Tayo, it's just, it's so just heartwarming when you see someone like Owen, who, mm -hmm. again, he's a thought leader in, in, in the industry of social media and of YouTubing, but just following his journey, what he's been going through, man, this is a guy that I would do anything for just because if he can persevere through his life changing experience, any one of us, man, we're capable of doing whatever we set our sights on doing. Yeah, and I, I think it reminds us of the of the power of the mind and the mindsets because he he made an active mind shift to turn his, you know, what many people will proclaim as a death sentence into uh, a, a just that drive to continue to push and to make sure that he was as authentic. He didn't hide the fact that he had cancer and he was real with it, but he was also authentic and then you know and he let the audience know what he was going through. And then he, you know, and now look what he's doing. And he's killing cancer, like the trill person he is. That's he's right. Back. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Okay. The, I, I had to turn the mic off. The, you know, I've had the mic for a while. It's been going out for a while. So it's time to just lay it to rest. Well, RIP, Mike, RIP. But you, we, hated, we hated to break the flow to you on because you were, you were on such a roll. And it, you were just talking about that cancer journey. And I, I think... This obviously, uh, Carlson and I can't relate, but I lost um, an uncle to cancer earlier this year. And I think a lot of us have lost uh, um, you know, loved yeah. ones to cancer. And one of the things that happens when people have cancer is um, people, business partners, friends, families don't know how to relate to you. They don't know if they should be soft around you or, or, or you know, kind or whatever, or what words they should say or walk in eggshells. What was that experience like because you had built this community you we, had a business and yeah. you had family and kids we what did you talk, we talked about that on, on the video blog too we were we were pretty uh you know we're we're writing a video right now called 10 things you don't say to someone with cancer um <laughs> and and really our heart in that was that is to help other people know how to speak to someone with cancer because a lot like i'm i'm, I'm really big in the holistic community right we're i'm, I'm right. very large in that community and personally we live our lives that way and so when you get cancer and you're in the holistic community they look at you like you've got the plague like you've somehow broken the commandments of holistic living and and you know brought this plague unto the people and i love a lot of those guys a lot of those guys were some of the rudest most insensitive people and I've blocked a lot of them. I have a no, I have a no blocking policy on my, on my, on my Facebook. Like um, even spammers, I give them one or two chances before I block. But um, I had one lady that was like, you got cancer because you're not a vegan and you're an animal killer. What? Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, the things these people say. So oh. talk about rhino skin. Oh my gosh. I. Uh, uh, talk about rhino skin. Hey, G Stockton, I see what you're saying and I'm aware. I don't want to get into it though right now. Um, he's asking a question about the website, but by the time this podcast airs, it won't matter. So, um, you know, what you have to do is develop, what you have to do is develop rhino skin. And I think that you have to do that no matter what. When, when you lose someone with, from cancer, it's different than actually walking with someone through cancer. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that to devalue the experience. What I mean is you see a different side of people. When I go into these infusion therapy rooms, imagine a room full of, um, full of you know, these cheap comfy chairs, cheap lazy boys. And <laughs> they're all connected to this brown juice or this red medicine, right? 90% of them are angry and they're mad. You know, why did this happen to me? You know, I decided I was going to be that guy that was that was like, hey, it's not what what happens. It's how you deal with it. Right. This thing sucks for me as much as it does for you. Hearing people say those things hurts as much to me as it does for you. And what you have to do is respond in love. That's what I believe. If you respond in anger, you are adding more anger to the environment. Right. Huh. Now. For me, it was very, very hard. Before I was even diagnosed, I knew I had a tumor, but they didn't know what kind of tumor. I got an email from a friend, I would even say a close friend, who sent me an article that said, how I came to accept my death. And I'm like, you're asking me to accept my death with four children before mm -hmm. I've even had a diagnosis? Mm. And I was like, no, you know what I mean? I'm like, this, that for me is like, I will not let you hurt me. Mm -hmm. And the same is true, right? 
when somebody says, I, I'm not going to buy from you. You have a crappy service. You, you, you know, um, you're, you're more expensive. You're too cheap, whatever. It's the same type of determination. You know what I mean? That that says, I'm not going to get mad that people aren't happy with my service. I'm going to get better. I'm going to ask myself, how can I create an environment in which these types, this type of energy doesn't even come at me, right? This is the law of magnetism. So we created, we took our cancer journey to the public. We made it very much in your face. Here's what I'm going through. And you know what, for the, like, people just started to respond with, you're inspiring, you're this. I'm not trying to be inspiring and I'm glad that I am. My goal was that for those, we all have our, people say to me, Sebastian said this to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got this, this problem in my life. He's like, it's nothing compared to you. And I said, bro, don't do that. Like your, your issue oh, is oh. your issue. You know, right. God allowed me to, to experience cancer, but he's allowing you to go through this other pain. So just because you're going through that and you think my problem is bigger doesn't mean that I'm not here for you. Let's talk about your problem. Right. Here's a PS, guys. Cancer right. people don't want to talk about their cancer all the time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that, that's why I love what you're doing because you're talking about your cancer. And you're also saying, and you're also saying that people can approach you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Well. It's like I know that but, I have cancer. It's okay if you remind me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let me ask you a question, uh, yeah. Owen. How, yeah. how do you feel that your experience – battling cancer has made you a better person uh, in so many ways man in so many ways um i've become a much more empathetic person and there was a a, a comment in here from a, a holistic doc who said those other people are wrong uh, uh renee i think i agree with you they're wrong and i don't blame the community at all you know what i mean i just think people like they're it's awkward it's and i'll be hey i was that guy one of my good friends said as soon as i got diagnosed he said i'll be honest man i don't know how to talk about this, but I'm just really sorry. And I, I was like, dude, I'm glad you said something, man, because you hadn't said anything for like a week. I, there's a lot of people like that, like that out there. But, um, you know, getting back to your question, which was, <laughs> how has the experience made you a better person? I have become a much more empathetic person, a much more, um, like a little bit softer, a little bit softer now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've become a little bit softer, um, you, you know, when and it, you know, I used to be this kind of this guy, yeah, you know, like, like, oh, what's going on? You know, uh huh. Oh, yeah, totally. I oh, do. Sorry. I'm just tweeting somebody. I'm just blabbing. Give me one second. What's going on? You know, when somebody now my wife comes to me with an issue, even my wife, you know, she and she cried. She says, you are so much more patient. You are so much more loving. She's like, you know, I'm so sorry you're going through this, but I love you so much, you know, and it's been, you know, cancer's been great for my marriage. Um, but you know, somebody tells me my problem, their problems. And I just kind of want to sit and chat with them and, and find out if there's anything that I can do to help, you know, or not. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more conscious of the, the stress level that I'm allowing into my life. And that translates into my business life. Um, just this week, I told you how much I loved going through my microphones and my, my tech. Um, but I also realized that my production manager probably could have been doing that. Um, and so eliminating the things I don't need to do while staying focused on the things that I do need to do. Uh, it's made me a calmer person, a happier person, uh, and I, I think a stronger person. One of the things I want to talk about is, so I had a near death, death experience. And the reason I'm bringing this up is, do you get more conscious of time? When I, when I was basically nearly dead That's in the, in the, uh, uh, the three, three car accident that almost that told me, it told my car and I somehow walked away unscathed. One of the things that I became cognizant of was I have um, time is so short. Time is limited. I need to appreciate this as more. I was 22 at the time and I was just thinking to myself, that could have ended a completely different way. And for some reason, I had nothing happened to me. I'm very curious as to your empathy point. If as you go on with life and with business and with your family, you start to understand there is no time for tomorrow. I, I should do tomorrow. what I want to do yeah. now. Yeah. And I should be really aware of that. And I need to make it whatever impact I can make now. I don't need to postpone anything. Is that something yeah, that absolutely. you share? Um, I, I, I get off my ass and do it. You know, um, I, I, right. I'll even admit like this week has been a party week for me. Like I'm in party mode and party mode for me is doing what I want to <laughs> do when I want to do it. Right. Uh, 
You know there what I mean? Go. So I've been in party mood because I was like, I did it. You know what I mean? I freaking did it. And my family did it. You know what I mean? So there, there's there been yes. that going on. But for the most part, when there's something that needs to be done, like storyboards, right? We, we're working on a whole new series. It has to be done. I'm the guy that's got to do it. I don't enjoy drawing because I'm not good at it. You know what I did, though? I I hacked it. I, I started, uh, I got on my iPad, looked up a picture of a house and traced it in the storyboard. So now I was able, you know, a simple version of a house, I found a way, right? Dr. Malcolm in Jurassic Park says, life finds a way. You know, <laughs> you, there's always a way to do something. I do have a business coach. She's very successful. Um, and she tells me, she's like, there's always seven ways to solve a problem. Now, whether or not that's true is not the point. The point is that, that there is somebody else who could do it if you're not going to do it. So, you know, when you're stuck, right. you've got to start thinking, you know, in a different way. And it's not about how you get it accomplished, but that you get it accomplished. We've actually had video shoots fall like un, not our problem, right? It's the software. It's the Internet. There's the client is on the beach. There's just not much we can do. Um, and we had to broadcast from a webcam, you know, the show okay. must go on. Yeah. You gotta Client, be never knew it. It. Client never knew it. Right. Until they saw, I'm sure they saw the thing and was like, wow, this is not the same quality we're thinking of, but it was, it didn't matter that it didn't matter that we didn't have the $1,700 camera on the client. What mattered is we got through the event. The client closed, I think, thirteen thousand dollars that night in the program. You know, so uh, mic drop, <laughs> drop the mic, mic. <laughs> you know, and the, the point I want to make is what you're saying is very important. And anyone listening out there, entrepreneurs, listeners, business people, anyone. Mindset shift, probing the way the way you you approach and frame questions or frame a problem makes a very big difference. You could say, "I have um, I have an accident. I am definitely going to take off work," or "I have an accident, and that means I need to be more Great. serious in my life." Or I, I yeah, and it's how you decide to frame it, and then putting that intention and sending that intention in motion does a whole lot of things for you. And you were talking about also finding people to do stuff for you. There are many things that you can do, but how are you better maximizing your time? And that goes back to the time point. And I love that you keep honing in all these little points that you're making. It's be positive, look for how you can help create value, frame your positive mindset, and just you know delegate when necessary and take time to appreciate the things that are more yeah, important and that's to you. Because you you're not, be, that's you're exactly not. what you should be doing. Like, what what is it? Why are you doing your business? Right? Why are you in the job? that you that you have i really enjoyed um the episode you had with the uh, the russian guy ivan uh, yeah ivan really ivan great interview ivan. because he's got a job right but he's also in this like startup community so he's leveraging one to do the other you know what i mean like i have to ask myself what is it that i really love about what i do and it's creating video man like i've always loved video i'm wearing right now i'm wearing a my mordecai shirt because I, the cartoon is funny to me it's, it's, it's a, it's, so I bought the shirt because I want, you know, I, it, it's, it's my passion. If you're not doing those things, you're in the wrong field. That's okay. Maybe your training is in medical billing, but you really want to be an actor, man. There's no reason you can't be leveraging YouTube, um, and, and Facebook groups and LinkedIn groups. You know how many Facebook and LinkedIn groups there are for actors that are unsigned or whatever, uh, we hire actors all the time to star in our YouTube videos. You know, that's a good day of work. You don't have to go through traditional media gatekeepers, right? Do what you love and then find a way to make it happen. Okay. That is real talk, my friend. That's how we roll. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Owen, we are, uh, we're coming short on time. This hour has flown by and we had all these questions that we wanted to ask you. So I have a feeling that we are going to have you on Hustle Culture for a part two interview at some point. If you guys want to see a part two with me, then you got to leave a comment uh, on this podcast and say, what's up? Bring that guy back or better yet, share this podcast on your social media. Tag me at Owen Hemseth. I will respond to you personally and say, what's up? So 
That's Boom. how. It is. Uh, oh, and before, that's how. That's how to sell. That's how to we sell. Wrap up. Always we, be we like to do. We like to do this <laughs> segment with each one of our guests. Think Shark Tank. It's your thirty second pitch, where you can tell the audience out there anything that you want them to know about you, your business, and most importantly, how they can find you. If you want to grow your business with an entirely new revenue stream from video and YouTube specifically, I will show you how to do that in a way that builds a system for your company. It is, it is the Henry Ford assembly line of YouTube success. And you can learn more about that at thevideospot.net. You can also go to YouTube, search Video Spot, and subscribe to our channel. We come at you two times a week with video marketing content on YouTube, SEO, and anything else we can do to bring traffic to your video. So we teach it for free. We teach it very much in depth in our live YouTube course. Love it. I have one question for you, though. How trill are you? I'm the trillist because I'm the realist. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Um, people in the audience are saying they love you. They want you back. So we definitely would love to have you back. And thank you for being open. Yes. Thank you for being honest. And thank you for just being yourself. I, I, I feel like a lot of people are not. And especially when you when they come on platforms, they don't necessarily they want to portray a version of themselves. But, you you know, you bared it all today, um, both literally and uh, figuratively. So really appreciate that. And you also shared the fact that you're a Star Wars fan. So, I am. I'm not, I'm not one of those. You know what I mean? But uh, in, in, not one of those. In what is that? media, <laughs> Star Wars was groundbreaking. Groundbreaking. You know what I mean? And you've got to respect that. I respect Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? There you go. No, hey, I'm I'm all for it. I'm all, I'm all for it. Look, this was great, Owen. You're exceptional. So if he's exceptional, I want you guys to all follow him on Blab here. Follow him on Twitter. And go check out his website, and um, definitely we'll, we'll we'll take your questions and suggestions for uh, what the part two is going to look like. Oh, sure. and so but, yeah, in most... our closing segment, we like to do this thing called the Weekly Hustler Spotlight. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on the spot here. I'm actually going to put the spotlight on you, my friend. <laughs> Normally, Tyo and I, we like to call out someone that we think is an emerging hustler, someone that we just want to spotlight and give a shout out to. But, you know, we're coming here up on the hour on our show. So I actually want to give you the opportunity as our guest this week to just throw someone's name out there, someone who you feel is doing extraordinary things and someone that could potentially be a guest here on Hustle Culture. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you, because I'm on the spot, I'm going to give you the first name that pops into my mind. I, I, I He's probably already been a guest, but uh, this is somebody that I very much look up to. He's local here in San Diego. I knew him because of his podcast before I met him. Um, since we met, when I met, he had just reached the million dollar mark or above with his business. And so immediately that had struck a chord. It's like, wow, you've got a, a company. But why I really love this guy is I, I thought he had a podcast and like a little company. He has a software. He travels the country. He's speaking. He loves fantasy football. He's a great dad. He's somebody that I really look up to, uh, Tyler J. Anderson. Mm. Uh, Tyler Anderson over at Casual Fridays, yep. he is um, just a businessman. And in, these, in, this, in this, um, this world of, of sort of like social media celebrity and – Sort of like right. you, you have like a million friends, so you must be making money. And, and in the YouTube community, it certainly is not the case. Sometimes you get into real like kind of real broke people. You know, I, I got 100,000 subs, but I'm not making any money. Um, Tyler Anderson. <laughs> That's pretty hustle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Tyler Anderson has created a business model. He's created a media company and uh, he's remained one of the most humble, nicest guys and a huge source of new business for us. He's just always talking about us and uh, sending people our way. So um, uh, he's somebody to definitely be watching. Yeah, Tyler is actually a really good guy, great right. friend as well. And he yeah. is also one of the uh, driving forces behind getting me into podcasting. So oh, really? I was, yeah, I was actually a guest on uh, on his podcast, uh, Social Media Hour, previously. So that's awesome. um, yeah, great guy. And uh, you know what? He has a heart of gold. And I think that's yeah. something, yeah, that's like something that's a lost 
quality. Because to your point, so many people out there, they're busy. They got all these followers. And Tyler's just one of those guys that anytime, you know, I've had to reach out to him, he actually engages and reaches back. And yeah, uh, we formed a friendship and I know I can pick up the yeah. phone and give him a holler whenever. So, so glad yeah. that you mentioned Tyler. Actually, we do want to get him here on Hustle Culture at some point. Well, there's the call. There's the call. Well. And uh, what? <laughs> I got, I got a question so from the audience. They want you to put your link. So while you're putting your link to your channel, I'll just shout out someone real quick. And my Hustlers podcast, I mean podcast, my Hustlers spotlight is on Lewis Howes. So Lewis Howes just released his book, which is called School of Greatness. And Lewis Howes, I've been following him since I was a junior in college, but he when he first started, Carlson knows the story. He was a, a LinkedIn guy. You know, he was a professional athlete who had broken his arm and was sleeping on his sister's couch and just – somehow stumbled upon LinkedIn marketing and said, okay, I can make money selling LinkedIn and doing webinars. And then since then, he's grown into this, this um, lifestyle entrepreneur where he has a podcast that has, I think, over a million views a month. And then he's, he's got his own website. He's got his own course. He's got his own sort of me, you know, persona, which is all about helping people achieve their greatness. Now, his podcast, Subscribe to his, his School of Greatness, it recently led him to, to land a book deal and I was listening to his um, episode on Michael Stelzner's show. And he said, you know, when he was on that couch looking and being broke on his sister's couch, trying to figure out what he wanted to do, hated school. He had just read The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. And he said to himself, I want to be friends with this guy one day. And Tim Ferriss is sort of that book just sort of planted an idea in his head. And then that led him to sort of building the business. But then fast forward two years, he was sharing the stage with Tim Ferriss because he was following his passion, which was helping people. Now, he decided that he was going to write a book when he met Tim Ferriss, and then he stalked his agent for basically three years and said, hey, I would love to do a book. I have a book in me, and this is what I want to do. And his agent, you know, blew him off the nice way, said, you know, you know, talk to me in two years, talk to me in one year. But he followed up every six months, he said, until he finally, until the agent finally heard him on, on the stage one time and said, I think we're ready for that book. And, <laughs> and they did it and they did and they pitched it to the publishers and they, and they bargained and did everything. But what I wanted to draw out of that is that uh, this is a college dropout athlete, broken his arm, didn't know what he wanted to do, sleeping on his sister's couch. It is possible, people. You just have to follow your dreams and take advantage of what you're good at. He was good at LinkedIn. He found out and that led into many other things. You don't have to do what you initially started, but what you start will lead to what you're going to end up with. So Lewis House, shout him out. His book is out. Go buy it. School of Great. Uh, good guy. Great listening. And uh, the book is also amazing as well. But that is my Hustlers Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we are at time. So once again, thank you so much, Owen, for joining us on Hustle Culture. I'm sure we will see you again. And for all of you watching us on Blab, hey, you guys rock. We could not do this without you. So Props to you guys out there. And once again, we're on iTunes. Make sure that you download, subscribe, leave us a review, all that fun stuff. And we will see you next week on Hustle Culture. Yeah. Turn it over to you, Tayo. As I always say, use your difference to make a difference. Peace. Peace. This bumps, guys. Boom. Another episode is back in the wrap. Thank you guys for coming on. And Owen, you are the man, man. I love it.